going to be a very lonely minister. We good? No. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to start winding up. Philippians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Let me look with me at verse 7. We're going to read quickly from 7 to 15. Amen. But what the, here's, here's he's addressing the same situation to another congregation with a little bit different angle. Aquinas, this, well, he's always using himself as an example. But what things were gained to me, what I used to consider really valuable, what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. What I used to think was important and really, I really had to have it, I just threw it away to get closer to God. Amen. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Watch. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He lost everything. No big deal. What's his attitude here? And do count them but dumb that I might win Christ. There's no, there's no wonder this man's mentality promoted him to being the most influential apostle out of all of them. Amen. Amen. You can strip me of everything. You can take all my belongings. You can take my wife and kids. You can take my home. You can take all my jewelry. You can take everything. To me, it's nothing but a bunch of cow manure and I count it that useless. All I want is more of God. Amen. 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 My Lord Jesus, what would happen if we developed that mentality? Does that sound like our generation? No. Does, it almost sounds completely polarized, doesn't it? Well, sister... We're glad you came to church. What made you pick our church? Well, we love your youth group. Brother, we're glad you're here. What made you pick New Day Christian Center? Well, you have a great ministry for men. Sister uh, Teresa, we're so glad you're coming to church. You've been here about five times. Just kind of help us serve you better. What made you pick our church? You're a block from my house. Right. <laughs> How long is he going to have to go through pew and pew and pew and aisle after aisle until he finds somebody who says, God called me here? Amen. It's, an, it, it's what is it, at least 50 minutes to McKinney from here. Close. More or less? A little bit less than that. It takes about 35 minutes. Well, yeah, but I've watched you drive. It's 45 <laughs> minutes to McKinney from here. Because he drives like he's still got red lights and sirens on his car. <laughs> what was that? That was Pastor Tony. Does he realize he does not have a siren? Well, in the Holy Ghost, he does. Praise God. That's 45 minutes one way to come to church. Daryl, how, how far is it to, to Turkey Neck, out where you live? <laughs> 70 miles. Per hour. 70 miles. What is that? Uh, An hour and 10 minutes? Never put on traffic. Go, go find that somewhere. To come to the ghetto. <laughs> I drive an hour, ten minutes, get to church. Where's it at? In the hood. <laughs> you do that, why? God said so. How many of you know he's immediately speaking a language they don't understand at all? <laughs> Turkey ran through the hood. <laughs> he, he, they can't even relate to those guys. They, they think they're abnormal, but they're actually more right with God than the other. So this no longer is really lining up with our generation at all. Please say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me start worrying about you. Hallelujah. I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I might win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Jesus Christ the righteousness which is of God by Faith. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Look at somebody says, time to start counting some things in your life as useless as they truly are. Time to start counting some things in your life as useless as they truly are. 
I'm not even going to go into women cleaning out their closet for junk they'll never wear again. Amen. That we think are desperately valuable and can't give up. <laughs> Maybe. What are you now? A size nine? What is that? A two? Well, either you're going to get so disciplined, I, I've never recognized that person. Or you're in all of that. Throw it away! Amen. Count it as dumb. Get it out. Same thing in your spirit. Amen. There's some things we're hanging on we think is so valuable and dear to us that it's our biggest obstacle to going on with God. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust me, I've been there a thousand times. You get further and further out into the wilderness as you start this process. And it's all intentional. You've got it this year. Every yeah, scripture I'm talking about right here. You start, you start, you start, you start, you start. And it's a decision to get closer and hear clearer. Closer and clearer. Closer and clearer. And closer and dearer. Because very few people have the heart to do that. And it's very dear to God when you do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I count it all done that I might receive Christ. I count all this stuff in my life that would hinder me going further as nothing but a bunch of tracks. Now look very closely. We're going to look at the last two things about God's involvement when you make the decision and then what's God acting like at the same time. Amen? John Amen. chapter 15. John chapter 15. What were all these scriptures dealing with, church? Do you, do you see a pattern here? Yeah. Getting out of the world into the Separation. spirit. Getting things out of your life so you get more God in your life. Getting rid of foolish, unimportant things to live a life pursuing truly important things. Amen. 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 Are you seeing that pattern? Amen. Now let's look at what Father God's doing. John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. John 15, 1 and 2. I am the true vine, Jesus talking here. My father is the husbandman. He's responsible for me growing. Amen. That's Amen. why when you go out in your watchtower, and ask him, he will point out things that are hindering your growth. Yes. Amen. That you need to count down, that you need to get rid of, that you need to stop making excuses for. When you get out there and really get sincere, God will say, this is the problem. Amen. Because he's a husbandman. This is what's causing you not to grow. I am the true vine, my father is the husbandman. Every branch, say every branch. Every, every branch. branch. Say, that means me. That means means me. Me. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. He moves it out of the way. And every branch that does bear fruit, that you take church out to the world during the week. Every, church, every branch that's actually doing that, he does what? Bless your darling heart. He prunes it. Your reward from heaven is God chops you up. What, what's he doing? Everything we just covered in one, two, three, four verses. He throws that away, cuts that off of you, cuts that out of you, chops that away from you. He purges everything that's not right in the flow of life. Everything that draws way out there to the end of a, a dry limb with no, no fruit on it, he cuts all that off so it comes straight up out of the root to the fruit. Hallelujah. Talk to any gardener, they, oh yeah, they know exactly what that's all about. All kinds of sap being drawn way out there into the world to dry dead limbs that never produce anything. God's answer was, no, we're not doing that. You're not, I'm not a black hole. You're not sucking all the life out of the Holy Ghost so that you can just have a good church service. I'm <coughs> cutting all that back so that when I move, you grow. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 All right. He proved, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Amplify, please, Pastor Tony or uh, Brother Allen. You're already open. I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. 
Any branch of meat that does not bear fruit and stops bearing, he cuts away and trims off and takes away. And he cleanses and repeatedly proves every branch that continues to bear fruit, to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. Amen. Same thing? Twice as good as this. Is twice as good? Yeah, it's changed for a lot, hasn't it? <coughs> That's still good. It's better to keep James, but they really messed it up. I'd still buy it amplified in this generation, but Amen. it's changed in 60 years. Yes. So what's God's goal toward this? How, did Jesus say you're the, you're the branch? Yes. He's the vine? So he's talking to who? Us. us. What's God's goal? It's right there, black and white. What is so simple? What does God want out of us? Bear fruit. Say it again, church. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. What does he want out of his church? Bear fruit. Bear fruit. To produce and bear fruit. And if we're not, what's he do? He just moves it out of the way. In other words, God's not hanging around to make you feel good. Come on. Well, go figure that one out. Amen. And if you are here doing really good in New Day Christian Center and really growing past the average uh, vine out there, what's his answer to you? Just work on you a little bit, boy. Why? I've done a lot. To, I tried 45 minutes to get here. Good. Now we're going to get more out of you. He wants more out of us. Amen. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. That doesn't go over very well today, does it? No. You've never even heard that preached, have you? No. Oh, just don't be so hard on yourself. No, God wants more. Why? It's fruit. It's all about bearing fruit. Eternal to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, you're doing good. And Pastor TC is very proud of you. So is the Lord. Many people just recently got ordained in this church. Praise God. You came in here not even knowing you're called. Now you can pastor your own churches. But God's about what? More. more. How's he get more out of you? Cutting more. more stuff out off of you. So you can go further with him. It's drier out there. Unless you're right under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right, Revelation chapter 3. My God, that's good. Amen. Revelation chapter 3. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, uh, did I say go home and just beat your head against the, the wall or beat your face in the fence? No. No, but this is Christian reality. Yes. Is God well pleased with this church? Yes. Is God well pleased with you? Yes. But you need to go out into your watchtower and say, God, I don't think I'm growing as much as I need to. Now, please point out what I I, 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 I wholly, wholeheartedly ask you to reveal what I need to get rid of, what I need to address, what I need to deal with. Because he wants more. Amen. Amen. Revelations chapter 3, I want you to look at verse 19. As many as I love, this is Jesus talking. How many of you like love churches? Amen. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. God always wants you changing your direction and changing your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at Hebrews chapter 12, last scripture. So God's interested in more. He does the pruning. He does the removing. And he doesn't really do any politicking about it. Jesus said, if I love you, I'm going to rebu rebuke and reprove you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hebrews chapter 12, I want you to look at verse 5. We're going to read very quickly to verse 10. Say amen when you're there. Amen. 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 And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Are you a child of God? Yes. yes. Now listen, children of God. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, the rebuke or correction of God. How many of you know Christians, the first time the pastor rebukes them, you'll never see them again? Amen. Amen. They despise the chastening. Like because they can find another church on six other street corners that will never address anything in their mind. My son, 
Have you forgotten that it speaks unto you as unto children? My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord what? Loves, he chastens, he corrects and rebukes. So these sweet preachers that never address anything, that's fainty folk junk. That is, that's fake, phony nonsense. They're after your wallet and your attendance. A real man of God is worried about your soul and how you'll stand in God's presence. Amen. 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 For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Uh-oh. And he scourges. Now we're going to look at that in the Amplified in a minute. And he scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is there that the father has not chastened? But if you be without chastening, whereof, are, uh, whereof all are partakers, then you are spiritual bastards. You're not sons of God at all. If God's never corrected you, you're not even born again. Hallelujah. Furthermore, you have fathers in the flesh with, which uh, corrects us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. Because they like to control the household. They want you running it. But he, God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, when you got preachers on TV walking around with their pubic hair shaved and wearing their, their pants clear down to the top of their private parts with movie stars, do you think that man's ever corrected anybody in, the, in this congregation? Never once. No. You got a household of bastards. And I submit to you that that pastor might be a bastard himself. Because he has not been perfected unto holiness. When you're caught on video taking shots in a bar with your favorite movie star in your church, there's a big gap in what God calls the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Amen. If you're without correction, you are a bastard. That's what it said, didn't it? Yes. Now, Brother Allen, would you please read verses 6 through 9, please? For the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone whom he loves, and punishes, even scourges, every scourges, every son whom he accepts and welcomes to his heart and cherishes. If God accepts you in his heart as a son, he's going to spank you. Amen. Any, any father that loves his kid would. Amen. Go ahead. You must submit to and endure correction for discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. You must endure and submit to correction as discipline. Because that's him dealing with you as a son. So when you go out to that watchtower and say, Father God, I'm separating myself from all things of matter of people. I want you to tell me what's wrong. You better be ready to admit he's going to start going to work on you. Amen. Because most people never even care to address the issue. When somebody comes dancing in his presence and say, God, I want you to show me what's what's messing this up and I'm not hearing from you and walking closer to you, he will go to work. Amen. I told you it's brutal. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. For what son is there who his father does not thus train and correct and discipline? It's impossible. If he's a real father, he's going to take care of business. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you are exempt from correction and left without discipline, in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate, then you are illegitimate offspring and not true sons at all. Moreover, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we yielded to them and respected them for training us. Shall we not much more cheerfully submit to the Father of spirits and so truly live? Amen. 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 So this voluntary dryness, 
I'm going to put away these toys. I'm going to put away this. Folks, some of it might be television. Some of it might be sports. Some of it might be entertainment of all, any manner. Some of it might be, some people are workaholics on purpose. Some of it, any manner of self-imposed distraction from going further with God. The dryness is counting it down and getting rid of it and getting closer to God. And the closer you get from God with this mentality, the further out by yourself you're going to get, the more you're going to realize it's a wilderness out here. And the only thing that will water me out here is His presence. A self-imposed exile. A self-imposed dryness. That I don't want to take any food. I don't want any water. I want God to feed me. Amen. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of the Father. It, it applies in so many directions in the spirit realm. The self-imposed wilderness is guaranteed to send you back with maturity. It's a promise. If you're a son and you seek him, he will correct you. And he will grow up. And he will produce more fruit. But it has to start here with the decision. I want to live in mastery. Amen. I'm as close to God as I choose to be. And I choose to be more. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God.